We can't all be amazing UI designers. Thankfully, there are plenty of UI kits and themes that you can purchase, many of them open in applications like Figma. In this short video, I'll show you how to take this design, if I zoom out a little bit, and translate it into a bubble page. So first thing I'll do is I've created a new page here and uh, I'm going to be using the uh, new responsive engine in this demo. So I'm converting or upgrading the page. And then the next thing I'll check is how large is the is each canvas that the designer of the te this template has used. Uh, so uh, they have set, um, and I'm setting this to a row as it's going to contain two columns. Um, the width in my builder, I want to be that figure there, 1440. And let's just give ourselves a little bit more height to work with. So this design here is made up of uh, two columns. One, I'd say that's about 60% and then that's 40%. Um, this looks like it uh, is more of a background just based on the curves um, on the border there. So uh, I'm going to just by double clicking down find the bottom layer. Uh, oh, and I can see that it's a gradient. Um, I'm just going to take one of these blues for the demo um, and set it as my background color. Perfect. Okay. And now uh, let's take um, our left hand column. When using the um, responsive engine beta, the new one, I find it really helpful to label things uh, because I often have to refer back to the element tree uh, in order to work out what bit I've got selected. So this one is going to be uh, aligned to parent and I'll show you why in a moment. And uh, its width is going to be fixed um, at 60%, uh, has 60% of the total canvas there. And then its height is going to be fixed also at 100%. And it's going to have a background of white. There we go. And let's have a look at the border radiuses. So I'm just double clicking down on the canvas here and I see that I've now got the background for the white and uh, by going over onto inspect I can see uh, it expresses CSS and extract these figures here which is a 16 pixel radius on the uh, top right and the uh, top left I'm going to drag that a bit across makes it easier to see there, um, oh no, top right and bottom left is what I meant. Bottom right, what am I saying? There we go. Right, you can see I have the radius um, in the right parts. I'm now going to create uh, the section for my form. And uh, by dragging the group in, for some reason, uh, maybe this is just because it's in beta, it's not actually giving it a height or a width. Um, so uh, what size do I need? I need it to be a width of 414 um, and then a height of uh, 345. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a series of columns because I'm putting in a number of rows in there and uh, the width is going to be so, uh, 416. And uh, the height, I'm just going to give it a min height because, um, oh, pixels. That's why it looks a bit funny. Uh, just so I can build into it. Perfect. And then, um, because I want this page to be responsive, but uh, this section here to always be that distance from the, the edge of the white box, I'm going to anchor it to the left hand side, or the right hand side rather, in the middle. And then um, in Figma, by holding. Well, by selecting a, a, an element and then moving my mouse into the gap, I can see the space between. Uh, so I need to give the white block a padding because padding is on the inside of an object and margin is on the outside, a padding of 141. Um, so I select my white left column and padding on the right side, uh, 141. 
Okay, and you can see it's now positioned my box there. Let's build up some more. Uh, we'll start with um, getting scripts of the topography. So uh, let's start off with something blank. Um, this text is, uh, I'm gonna make it an H1, good for SEO and good for screen readers. Uh, and it's Lato Bold uh, 32. And click on here for the height, paste it in, uh, the, the color rather, and paste it in. And uh, then let's just call it registration complete. Subscribe to our newsletters. Perfect. Little typo there. Brilliant. Okay, you'll notice that it doesn't look exactly the same and that's because uh, this has got a fixed width as a pixel value. But I want it to take up the whole of the container, so I give it 100%. So it fills up all of the space of the container that's gonna hold my form. And now I'll drag another text element into here. And uh, this time I'll just copy and paste the text. And Let's check that all the topography is correct. So this is Lato uh, 14400. So it needs to be a little bit smaller and then it's a different color. Brilliant. And I see there's a little gap between the two. So uh, in Figma, you can, if I zoom in a little bit, do the same trick. Uh, I have this selected and then just moving my mouse over this element and I can see that there is an 11 pixel gap. So I'm gonna add 11 pixels to the margin on the bottom of my header. Okay, and then let's do email. So we need an input field. Okay, and it's not put it in the right place. We can see here that it's not in my group, so I'm just gonna drag it in. Uh, and so my input, uh, looking at the styling here, it's got a border on the bottom edge, but otherwise it doesn't have uh, any other styling to it. So um, background here, so that's the background of the line that appears at the bottom of my input field. So I need to get rid of the horizontal padding so that it's right up to the edge and then um, turn off all the borders apart from bottom uh, and also all the border radiuses need to be zero in order to have a straight line. And I paste my color in there and you can see just about, there's that faint line in there. Um, then let's just get a rough height. If that is uh, 71, let's make it 54. It's always a good height for an input. And uh, this needs to be 100%. Um, the placeholder is start typing. And there's one other thing missing from this row and that is an icon. Uh, of an envelope. Maybe that's not available in font awesome. There we go. We'll just use this one for now. Um, okay, and this has highlighted a uh, an issue because I want this icon. Uh, if we even, let's just do it perfectly. Grab the color. Can you see what the issue is? The issue is that the icon is not sat in the right place. Um, What's the size? The size is 18. So to get around this, I think I will select both and say uh, group and align to parent. Um, I'm then going to uh, set to height to content. There we go. And now I should be able to do that. So it doesn't really matter where the um, input field is, is aligned to because it fills up the whole space. Um, but it allows me to put my envelope in the corner. 
Um, I also notice that this is missing a, uh, a label in there. Uh, so it's a uh, Lato 400 regular 14. And if I was building up a whole app like this, I would start saving these styles uh, with labels such as input field la label um, so that I can recall the style later on. Um, email, get rid of the min height, uh, it also needs to be next. Okay, and then um, I'm going to want to group this email, uh, I mean, I, actually I don't need to do that. I was going to suggest grouping the email with um, the group containing this input field and the icon, but I don't actually need to do that. I just need to get the distance between here and here, which is 72, and I can add it as a margin to the bottom of there. Brilliant. Last thing is a button. And I want the button, if we look at my um, element tree, I don't want the button inside of group C. So I'll just click um, center last. Let's get the gap. Um, I can apply it to the top of the button this time around. There we go. Finish. Okay, we're almost there. I think we're just missing the design here. Um, and with um, Figma, you can do quite a nice, uh, you can export very easily, in fact. Um, so actually, it, it looks like that image is really big. Uh, so I'm just going to export a portion of it for uh, this demo. Because it's made up of all of these parts. Okay, well, let's export this because it, it shows you just how easy it is to export. Um, so I export it uh, here, export layers. Right, I've just realized that's exported them all as individual layers. What I should have done is export image here. There we go. So I've selected the group. Then back in bubble, um, I'm going to need to build another column because I could just put the image straight in here and anchor it to the right, um, but uh, then I, I want it to be anchored to the left hand side and so the way to do that is going to be to build in a second column. Um, so if this was width 60 then this will be width um, 40 percent. Make the height 100. Okay then uh, I can drag in my image Let's uh, just de skew this a bit. Oops. What should we go for? Six hundred pixels. Okay, I'm just going to try because right, we can see the aspect ratio is off. It's distorting the image, and I could check um, keep elements. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. So because the image I've imported is is square, I can just tick that box there, uh, aspect ratio one to one. Um, let's have a look then. Okay, so we're basically there. Um, what you'll notice, and um, I'm hoping that Bubble will fix this at some point, um, is that you can't set, uh, if you were building this in, in something like Webflow or WordPress, um, you could set this element's height uh, not to 100% of, of the page container because that has got a min height, um, but you can set it to 100% of the view height. Um, so that's something to consider if you are building these split panel 
uh, designs um, when when you come to it is how are you going to lay it out uh, without avoiding kind of an ugly gap at the bottom.